Hello, and welcome to my Hard Mode Career Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to try and do all the basic stuff first, and I'll be doing it with post commentary so that I can get through it uh, fairly quickly, and we can get to the more interesting stuff. So you can see here, I uh, named my little uh, Save YouTube, I chose the Hard Mode here as my game difficulty, and this will be my first time trying this out. And this is the main attraction for me in Point Two Five, being able to select this difficulty mode with uh, the reduced rewards and the severe penalties, and of course all the other restrictions you see there under general options. So uh, let's get to it. First things first, I go to the contract building and grab all the basic contracts. Launching a vessel, 5,000 meter altitude, escaping the atmosphere, though I just clicked on that, and uh, getting into orbit. But before we do all that, I decided to do the basic thing first. Since this is hard mode, I wanted to rack up as much science with, as, with the minimal cost as possible. So uh, here we go. We do uh, an EV, EVA report above uh, Kerbin Shores. Then we do all the other little reports that we can do. I get a surface sample from the launch pad. There we go. And of course EVA report from there. And I also, uh, after storing those into the pod, decide to have him uh, go out. This is Jeb, of course. Uh, go out and uh, plant the flag to indicate the location of, of the launch pad so that uh, if we decide to return our vehicles as close to the Space Center as possible, we can uh, have a little marker to uh, go by, especially when it's in the dark, that's helpful. Then I get Jeb back in, get the science, uh, retrieve all the parts, which is just uh, mod propellant on the command pod, and uh, Jeb is back home safe. <laughs> and then I unlock the basic rocketry parts, which is what I wanted. Now, of course, in hard mode, we have to unlock the specific parts, uh, so we have to pay funds for that. I check that we don't have any more contracts and then I build my first first vehicle. This will definitely get into orbit. Uh, as you can see five of the two-ton uh, fuel tanks and then a booster at the bottom. The engine is the LVT-30 which is the only one we have right now. So here Jeb goes heading for orbit. Okay, booster ignited, SAS safely on. Of course, the only SAS uh, available is with the command pod, the only reaction control power that we have right now. We don't have any reaction rules or anything like that. So I have to be a little bit careful, though not so much with this one as with uh, further launches. Now, I was uh, sort of aware that uh, we have uh, destructible buildings and stuff right now. So I decided to tilt a little bit in order to help the little booster that we separate right here uh, to not quite hit the launch pad. I, I don't know if that... Of course it didn't really make a big difference because uh, that little booster wouldn't do much damage, but just in case... I don't know if the damage is cumulative in any way or whether you have to do it all at once. But anyway, uh, easy thing to get into orbit with this. I'm not going to belabor the point. So um, you can see here me setting my apoapsis to about 73 kilometers and then burning for orbit at the apoapsis as usual. And of course with this we'll uh, make sure that Jeb gets uh, the EV reports around the planet. I will show you all the signs that I get as I get them uh, just to uh, make the whole hard mode thing legit otherwise it's not... Uh, uh, you might wonder why I got some science from it, and I don't want that. But uh, here I've got a very low uh, periapsis, and my apoapsis is getting a little bit high. Um, so I decided to uh, stop it around there with 55 kilometer periapsis, and that would end up being a little bit too low, as I'll show you. Um, not for any dangerous reasons, but just convenience sake. So I got the EVA uh, report above Kerbin's water. And one thing I notice about uh, this uh, EVAing in the new version is that the Kerbals tend to try and uh, slip off. We don't see it as much right here, but later in the episode we'll see them. So uh, here I get Jeb out, and we get a tough one here, this Kerbin's Shores, which is uh, sometimes a little bit tricky. Well, I mean, from here it's a little bit tricky to aim for. Uh, you could just uh, do it uh, right over to KSC, for instance. So continuing on, get grasslands. Here I'm aiming for the mountains, which is another one of the trickier ones. End up with shores first. 
But uh, be persistent. There we go. So we get the mountains, and if you've got mountains, you know that you can get highlands uh, pretty quickly. So just uh, let him uh, rest for a second uh, pond and then bring him back out again. There we go, and highlands. No, mountains. Now try again. There we go, highlands. All right. Now here's why I said it was a bit too low. I tried for the deserts but ended up in the up, upper atmosphere here. You can see that we're below 70, just below uh, the mark for orbit. So, But also I noticed that we hadn't really fulfilled the contract for orbit so I needed to boost up. And so I did that. So I got the orbital contract fulfilled. I didn't even realize that I was quite so picky, but okay. Of course, Yuri Gagarin, uh, on his first orbital flight, actually uh, deliberately had a trajectory that would eventually bring him back down. It wasn't a stable orbit. And, of course, that was for safety's sake, just in case there was some problem with the retrofire. So, anyway, but that's just me being picky. And uh, here we get all of our EV reports in order. And so I retro burn, trying to aim for the KSC as usual, but... Uh, I'm not really good at this, still not really good at this with all the practice I'm doing in the 0.24.2 stock series. And, um, well, we shall see. Yeah, still more development necessary in terms of this. I noticed that my inclination was a bit off for some reason, so I, I aimed for the... We have now inclination markers, uh, though I don't need them. I know that I needed to tilt a little bit north, and so that was obvious. Um, here I'm uh, struggling with the control a bit, perhaps, because I know I probably should be pulling it in, which means going a little bit uh, uh, northwest rather than northeast. So uh, here, trying to aim northwest. There we go. Okay, that looks like a good trajectory towards the KSC. Now some people will say that uh, this this uh, sort of thing always works to hit the KSC, but that depends on your starting uh, orbit. Uh, if you have a very consistent starting orbit, then yes, uh, you can say that a certain trajectory will always help you hit the KSC, and that will be fine. But uh, I'm not interested in that, actually. I'm interested in trying for an arbitrary orbit. Okay, so you see here I expended all my fuel for... Uh, to slow down and try and hit the KSC, but we were overshooting anyway. Uh, Jeb was going to uh, go a little bit further. That's fine. I mean, we had limited ability to control it, but uh, everything uh, looked to be uh, in good order as we passed overhead. And here come the flame effects, I think. And I also uh, open the parachute uh, at around 25 kilometers because I wanted to increase the drag of course trying to slow down as quickly as possible okay then uh, we ended up about uh, 20 something kilometers away from the KSC and this is where we splashed down and I recovered a vessel and there we have it uh, a fair bit of science from orbit around Kerbin and uh, we recover those for a good value, though not uh, excellent. No additional reputation for bringing back Jeb, I don't know why that is. But uh, used to get some, but don't do that anymore. We'll certainly get a reputation hit if we lose him, of course. Now, the contracts didn't really impress me. I, uh, I mean, if you take a look at the com uh, funds for completion, it's pretty meager. Uh, these these uh, part tests aren't really even worth it. There you see 3,200, that's one of the higher ones. Uh, some of them, uh, that's only a thousand. The parachute one was even less than that. And of course they have these really tough requirements uh, getting between two altitudes and two speeds. Uh, so that's that's uh, tricky business to try and manage that. I ultimately decided to get rid of some contracts and hope they'll give me better ones. And uh, here we go, I got science data around Kerbin, which could have used on the previous flight, of course. Uh, in fact, throughout this episode, I'm basically one flight ahead of the contracts. Um, so, the next, my next attempt to try and get rid of a contract to get a new one didn't work. I was hoping that that would give me a new one, but oh well. 
So here, unlocking some signs, I finally decided to get the... What did I get this time? Oh, the nose cones were important. I'm sort of bouncing between these two technologies here. But the nose cones and radial decouplers are definitely a thing. I could have gotten the radial decouplers by taking that contract uh, to uh, test them out. But uh, I decided to just get the technology. And I'm thinking about the LVT45 here. I'm gonna eventually regret not getting the batteries though. So here I unlocked the LVT45, the nose cones, the radial decouplers. Of course, uh, nose cones are necessary because this is Elegant Design Bureau and I can't be having things uh, hitting the atmosphere bluntly. I maintain that sort of design spec. So here we go. We've got uh, four uh, liquid uh, rocket boosters as you can see here. Very nice. And uh, yeah, this is meant to uh, get us to land on the moon or Minmus. But because I didn't unlock the batteries, I'll realize uh, belatedly that maybe that might not be possible. But here we go anyway. Jeb again. I decided not to swap Kerbals. I was trying to get through this as quickly as possible. The playtime for uh, this episode in total was about, oh, I'd say uh, maybe two hours uh, with a couple of breaks. So up we go. Now, I, know, uh, I, I only had the control power from the command pod, so I ended up straying as the thrust got really serious. The LV, uh, I used LVT-30s here for the thrust, and so they didn't have gimbling, so it was just a reaction control power from the pod. So I had to get it uh, turned back to my prograde vector, and I decided to do that before releasing the boosters and igniting the next engine. So uh, that's what you see me doing here. And there we go, boosters away safely and the uh, center engine lit. All is well. I again won't uh, belabor the issue. I uh, plotted for for uh, orbit and I also plotted for the transit to the moon. So I did make orbit, I hope that wasn't too much of a surprise. And uh, here is the Translunar injection. Okay, trying to fine tune it here. Uh, taking a look, I seem to be a bit off, and so what I'd ultimately have to do is uh, make a further adjustment here. And this one brought me within a close altitude. Sort of aiming for 30, I think, but uh, what did I stop at? Oh, I, I took 50, 50 ish kilometers. Okay, approach to the moon. I told you we we're going to be going through this a little bit quickly so that we can get to all the fun stuff. And of course, uh, it's a little bit tricky though. Uh, our funds, we don't have much by way of funds, honestly. So it's a pretty tight thing. I don't know if. Of course, I'm, I haven't uh, done reusability yet here. I've uh, been wantonly um, dis discarding my stages without trying to retrieve them. Unlike the Efficient Design Bureau series, uh, we might have to uh, take some lessons from the Efficient Design Bureau series and use some of those designs in here. But for now, I'm, I'm pondering whether to do more airplane stuff in here, and so that might be something in the future. And so maybe maybe instead of having the airplane moments in that, we'll be having them in this. Though uh, that'll put a heavy burden on us to uh, retrieve them. Otherwise, if uh, if I fail on any of those those aircraft designs, uh, we are going to be down quite a bit of uh, funds, and we don't have m many ways of gaining funds. Okay, so here we go, getting into lunar orbit. We end up with a nice tight orbit. Though, uh, again, I seem to be a little bit high on my apoapsis side, a little bit too high, as it turns out, for doing the, the EVA reports. But here I get some, and uh, here's the problem. Uh, consistently, Jeb wanted to float away from the command pod. 
Uh, just instantaneously after I hit EVA, he started to float away from the pond, so I eventually had to struggle to get him back towards it. This did not happen just once, this was a repeated thing. It was not a problem around Kerbin orbit, and it would not be as much of a problem around Mimus orbit, but there was something peculiar about the moon uh, that uh, just, wanted, just, just made Jeb want to float away from his command pod. So, uh, yep. Lots of maneuvering to do, very patient. This, more than anything else, uh, caused the whole mission to take a lot of time. But we plugged on. You can see that I already have something plotted there, and that's because I decided to... Uh, I noticed that Minmus was in a good location, and so I decided to plot a Minmus transfer right away. So that's why I had there, as I continued to do the EV reports and try to struggle with Jeb to keep him on the pod. I wonder if this is some squad plot to uh, frustrate our attempts to just have them hang on the command pod while doing these EVA reports. Uh, I guess it did make it more interesting, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, one thing of course now I noticed that I was uh, losing electric charge and of course I hadn't unlocked the batteries so it wasn't an option to slap those on or anything. Uh, but I was worried that if I tried uh, landing on the moon that I would eventually have the problem with the electric charge and I wouldn't be able to take off again for instance or I might lose electric charge on the landing if I did too much maneuvering with the SAS trying to balance me out. So that was a issue, that was a concern and so I decided that I would instead of trying to land on the moon this time before getting the batteries I would just get all the EVA reports done around the moon and around Minmus because we have the fuel to transfer to Minmus as well. I had not decided at this point whether to land on Minmus, which requires much less by way of control. But uh, here you see I discovered that I was a little bit too high at that point, but in any case I decided to transfer over to Minmus instead of reducing my orbit to get lower. So this is the Minmus transfer. So we still have some EVA reports to do around the moon. We didn't hit all the craters because I was too high. Part of my problem was actually that the LV909s don't recharge the batteries. So even though the LVT30 was uh, keeping up my electric charge, right now there's no way for me to recharge at all. I don't have solar panels or anything like that, so as we depart the vicinity from the moon, that is very much on my mind. And you'll see me later on often turning off SAS while doing turns, so that I can just uh, continue to turn without it trying to fight against me. And so uh, that will be a way of conserving electric charge. Here you see me doing the inclination change. Remember, the inclination of Minmus is about 5 degrees off from the moon. So uh, here I am adjusting for that and making sure we meet Minmus at a fairly decent altitude. Some fine adjustment is necessary of course. There we go. Uh, you can't, I mean, I guess I could have gotten closer to Minmus than this, but there's really no point. Okay, so here at uh, Minmus's vicinity, I, I flatten out my orbit because that's generally helpful, especially, uh, especially since I hadn't decided whether I was going to land on Minmus or not. I ended up doing so, but uh, you'll see me pondering that and not quite being sure of that. So, but just in case I decide not to, uh, having a flat orbit is helpful, and of course it also got my periapsis down to 20 kilometers. So here we go. Doing our orbital burn. Jeb is excited. Curb invisible over there. Quite a bit more distant than from the moon, of course. There's something about the look of Minmus that makes me want to linger on it whenever I edit videos. Uh, it, the rugged terrain is so much more engaging somehow. Okay. So uh, here we go, of course, orbital burn, quite successful. And once again, I, I, I just 
don't pay attention to getting my apoapsis close enough to make sure that all the EVA reports can be done. I, I don't know why I have suddenly had a lapse of knowledge in terms of how low I need to be in order to get the EVA reports, but there we are. Anyway, I got the, the lowlands and I uh, proceeded on. Jeb was much more controllable in Minmus orbit than in lunar orbit. Though I still had to sort of scoot him up before he uh, slid off there, as you can see there. Midland is done. And so, yeah, there's, there's still a bit of a... doesn't want to quite stay on the ladder. Okay, uh, Greater Flats. Just collecting science. I did the goo container around uh, lunar orbit, and here I do one in Minmus orbit, and that shows you that I wasn't quite sure about landing just yet, because otherwise I would have obviously saved the mystery goo container for the surface, which would be much more points. Okay, and here I discovered that I'm too high, of course. Of course, I did get points for high over Minmus, but I was trying to actually aim for the flats, so. After getting uh, one more little report here, though uh, struggling a bit with this one because the Midlands always get in the way. No, we've already got Midlands. Trying to get uh, that little, f those flats there. Still Midlands. Of course, I'm trying to uh, get those flats by skirting over a very tiny bit of it. But uh, me and Jeb, we're a persistent bunch. And he doesn't mind hanging out there better than the tiny window in that command pod. We eventually get slopes and I decide to be satisfied with that. So I continue on, I do a little bit of a retro burn in order to get our altitude lower on the apoapsis side. And that allows me to do more of the reports that I was missing. Great flats. And then after a little bit of uh, time warping, we get to the flats are the easiest ones to spot, of course, so just make sure to get all of those. Well, maybe not all. Just the lesser, great, greater. Those are the main ones as far as what I got. Okay, out he goes again. Okay, and we board. Alright, so at this point I decide that it would be okay to try and make a landing. And so here is the initial descent burn. It's actually more of an inclination change because I was trying to aim for the greater flats. And I figured that we would need to uh, tilt up a little bit in order to hit them properly. Okay, and so you can see where I'm aiming there. Not, not that not that point, but you can see where the orbit is crossing, and uh, here we go for for a landing. Of course, if you're just starting out in this game, and this is the place you want to try your first landing, uh, it has very low gravity, it is fairly easy to reach, and it gives you a lot of time to think about what you're going to do next. Uh, of course, with a lot of landings, especially on uh, heavier body like Kerbin, uh, you have somewhat less time to react to uh, to anything that might be going on. So best to practice on Minmus just on the first try. Of course uh, Minmus is a little bit uh, boring for me, but best to get it out of the way then. Unfortunately we don't have the plant a flag on it uh, contract. We didn't have a contract for any science to do with the moon or Minmus. So we were sort of preempting that. Like I said, uh, consistently I was one mission ahead of the contracts, which is part of the problem with my funding. And so I'm a little bit worried about the funding because the contracts aren't really keeping up with my capabilities. Okay, but uh, here we are, safely touched down with Jebediah Kerman on the surface of Minmus at the Greater Flats. And now it is time to do some science. EVA. So first thing, of course, uh, EV report uh, just above the... Oh, it's the Lesser Flats. Why did I say the Greater Flats? I thought it was... Oh, well. Anyway, my mistake, Lesser Flats. 
I think I ended up making that mistake later. We'll see. When I plant the flag, I mean. Okay, so, yep. Nope. I, I don't know why it allows me to take a surface sample from all the way up there, but, you know, whatever works. Now, we already did that EVA report from above the surface, which was redundant, actually, as it turned out. So, I can't do an EVA report here. Don't worry, I'll remember to do an EVA report. But first, applying the flag. Did I say lesser flats or greater flats? I said greater flats. Yeah. So, I didn't pay very good attention to which flats I was on. That's gonna confuse me later. Didn't have any sort of uh, pithy message to write in there, so I just went on with it. This is a fairly easy mission for Jeb, so I didn't uh, bother to think too hard about it. Let's just get the science done and get everything all nice and neat in terms of the tech tree so that we can do some of the serious stuff. Okay, and of course uh, the EVA report was redundant. Okay, but the crew report is not, so that was important. I had grabbed the existing crew report from out of the pod, and that allowed me to do a crew report, and now we have to do the additional EVA report on the surface. So, I think I ended up not forgetting anything here, except for where I actually was. I ended up taking the surface sample reflexively, but of course I realized that I had already done that. Granted, it's technically above the surface for some. Uh, I don't. Let's not get into it. Okay, so using the jetpack to get up, and that's another thing that is much easier on Mimis, using the little EVA packs to, to maneuver about. Good practice, and, uh, and yeah, of course we don't have ladders yet, so have to use the EVA packs to get back into the pod, and up we go. The LV-909 is actually pretty overpowered for any of this stuff. And you'll eventually see me at the end of the episode unlocking precision parts so that we can do, you know, use smaller parts, uh, less thrust to get to where we're going. Here you see me plying both for orbit and for our curb and return, though I'll have to adjust the curb and return trajectory after we do the orbital burn because it'll be just a bit off, of course as usual. So the burn for orbit, no no big deal and that's why I'm doing post commentary here because I don't want to spend more time than is absolutely necessary to convey exactly what I did on these missions. So and here is of course the burn for Kerbin, trans Kerbin injection and we are on our way back. Just a little bit of refinement as we try and get to a periapsis that will allow us to aerobrake properly. That looks good. I also wanted to adjust our inclination and that is of course because we want to hit the KSC. We want to try and hit the KSC so we need to instead of have the multi, uh, what is it, five, per, uh, 5 degree inclination of Minmus get back to 0 degrees so that we can be equatorial and hit the KSC which is at the equator. So that's what I was doing on that mid-course plane change. Getting our periapsis back to where it needed to be because if you just do a plane change, you might deviate from the intended periapsis somewhat. And here's our approach to Kerbin. Managed to get a pretty good look at the approach this time. We're still oriented north-south, so that's why Kerbin seems to be rotating that way. Very nice. And re-entry. Not, not full re-entry, this is just arrow breaking actually. We are trying to get uh, lower orbit and from that we will try to aim a little bit better for the KSC. I had to use a little bit of a burn in order to lower our, our orbit. It turned out that we were still a little bit high on the periapsis. So brought it down a bit more. The inclination was very good though. And I was basically aiming for under 200 kilometers on the apoapsis.
Maybe that should do it. You know, the low periapsis there, and that's of course because I'm going to be coming in for landing anyway. It turns out that I was a little bit too too low though. I, uh, I tried to correct higher, but uh, not enough, actually. And what number did I hit here? Just 15 kilometers? Yeah, definitely not enough. So we ended up coming in quite a little bit ahead of the KSC in the water on the on the west side of the continent but still everything is quite safe we have uh, plenty of parachute power to slow our descent but even then I decided to be a little bit cautious so ensuring that uh, no parts break off I decided to dump a little bit of fuel in order to bring my velocity down to six meters per second and then splash down quickly recover vessel before anything breaks off on the final impact of the water as the vessel tilts over and we got more than 500 science of course uh, I know I know you guys can all get much more science from Minmus on one mission and yes but I'm not much of a science spammer and I wanted to do other things I I don't want to keep bouncing up and down on Minmus that's very tedious. I decided to look at the administration building for the first time and try and pick one of these strategies that they've introduced to the game. Now the only thing I really need is funds and the only thing I have that's really discretionary is is our reputation. So the obvious thing was to convert the reputation to funds but I had to figure out how much reputation I actually had. Uh, there isn't actually a very good numerical display so I decided on a trick by increasing the commitment level you'll see where it starts getting into the territory where it doesn't let you do it because you don't have enough reputation and so there I discovered the approximate amount of my reputation. And here you see we begin a fundraising campaign in order to of course raise funds and uh, that's it. I looked through all the others but decided there's nothing else I wanted to do. Time to unlock technologies, finally getting the batteries and of course the science junior very important and then uh, I decide to get the landing lights and the solar panels of course and uh, there you see the precision engine precision engineering that I will eventually want but I eye the probe core because the probe core will let me not risk kerbals very important and since I'm using reputation to get funds though not much it's just really a meager amount either way uh, best to maximize the reputation and of course probe core is fairly light so I selectively unlock parts based on what I need get the probe core get the reaction wheel not into airplane stuff just yet so don't need the elevon okay precision engineering we get but I don't unlock any of those parts just yet because I want to think about it get the solar panels and the, and the landing lights not the other lights because we want the distance the spot lights are important okay and that basically does it so now I look for my contracts and finally we get planned flag on Minmus boy could we have used that earlier science data from Minmus, science data from around the moon uh, plant a flag on the moon uh, just one mission too late guys you could have given me this earlier I think about the exploring Duna one but initially I didn't realize that it doesn't expire and I'm worried about these things expiring because otherwise I've got these hefty penalties you can see some of them the penalties are way more than the actual completion value so I'm worried about that but eventually I do notice that it doesn't expire so I decide to pick it up yes so those are our contracts and then I decide to with the additional funds because we got the advances right uh, because of the advances uh, from those contracts I decide to pick up uh, the tiny little radial LV-1 LV-1Rs I think it was and then of course the little orange Rocket Max uh, 2477s I'm thinking about those little fuel tanks but I don't think they're necessary 
Okay, so uh, thank you for watching this first episode in my 0.25 hard mode career series. And uh, tell me what you think about how things work out, especially the post commentary, whether you want me to continue that or go back to my in time reactions. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.